All right, this is 10 gauge side by side number two. And I know a bunch of people are wondering, why did I get a second 10 gauge side by side? Well, the opportunity presented itself at just a little bit over one third what I paid for the first one. And this is an impeccable condition. And the importer is very similar. Well, it's actually the same as the first shotgun that I ever received back when I was 10 years old, Kaznar Imports out of Harrisburg, PA. So I'm going to do a couple close-ups so you guys can see a little bit more of what I'm going to have to clean up to make this one as nice as my first. But it's actually in better condition than my first one, even though my first one looks almost, almost perfect for a 50-plus-year-old gun. Now, this gun is actually made... By the same company that my mercury magnum is i made a video about a little over a year ago it's not as fancy but there's a lot of similar similar uh, characteristics on this one as the very first one so i'll get into that here in a second so you can see the muzzle has a little bit of tarnish and it needs to be cleaned up still much nicer than the very first one you could see a little bit of bluing around the edges. Bores need to be scrubbed. See a little bit of surface tarnish there. But overall, really nice. See, I got a mark here I've got to work out. But look, it's just mostly dust. It looks just like the Mercury Magnum. Now I got some chips here. But that's okay, I can I can clean that up. Got a couple little dings. Now this one has brass beads versus the first one, which is that Mercury Magnum. And I got a little bit of wear here on the rib. But you can see this one is in impeccable condition. It's really nice. Let's see, I've got a little bit of tarnish in there I need to clean up. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look almost identical to the very first one? The wood's actually surprisingly nice on this. You'll notice a lot of the same patterns. Now, this uh, butt pad is also glued on. It's hardened and it it's... Uh, shrank a little bit but I'm gonna leave it that way so I gotta clean out some of these marks on the wood gotta clean around that trigger guard the triggers all right I moved over to the bench to get a little bit better look at this so you see I got a couple things I gotta clean up got a mark here clean all this up like I said trigger guards kind of dirty need to get in there and clean that up but there's no major rust or anything a lot of dust there's a mark here from opening and closing because they had this gap a little bit too tight some uh, bluing wear right on this edge but overall really not bad so I'm going to come back and show you some of the stuff I'll use to clean it up. All right, so that's what I'm going to use to clean it up. I've got natural walnut oil, Parker Hale, out of the UK. Here's some Renaissance wax. That's what I clean my wood up with. It's actually for museum restorations, but it works amazing. Also, out of the UK, that's a just regular CLP. Here's some grease. And flits is what I'll use to polish up that muzzle. I'm not going to show how I do it, but what I will do is show you the finished product. All right, I'll see you here in a couple of seconds. All right, so I cleaned up this side by side 10 gauge that I recently picked up. Um, hopefully, the initial video covered the condition it was in which was, you know, kind of dirty, needed some spots of the stock cleaned up. You know, some of the metal was 
had a little bit of, you know, maybe tarnish, surface rust, whatever on it, and it cleaned up surprisingly well. It's certainly not as nice as the first one that I made a video on, um, but it it is a, a pretty nice gun overall. I mean, they, they are these older, you know, say 70s, Spanish-made side-by-sides. Now, coincidentally, this gun appears to be made by the same factory that made the uh, first 10 gauge, and I'll grab the butt pad to show you. So the very first video that I made uh, about the uh, Mercury Magnum is made by, uh, you know, I'm not even going to try to say that, but you guys can look at it, okay? And that's the original butt pad, as you know, some, some have asked. I even made a video on replacing it. These are glued on, and uh, so is that one, unfortunately. Now, this butt pad is is hard, but it's not, it's not completely shot like this one was. Now, this one was still supple, but completely falling apart. So, remember... That's what I originally showed you. Now look at the receiver. Or not receiver, geez, the top of the barrels. And what does that say? It says the same darn thing. So that's who made that. That's who made this gun is Zabala. What have you. Like I said, not, not going to try to say that. Um... Now, that action of the first one that you guys can see right in the corner, that one is a combination of a box lock slash side lock action. This is a full-blown box lock action. So, you know, my understanding is that, you know, it's box locks are really, really tough, really robust, but also, you know, we're kind of on the affordable side to make. Uh, this gun has some of the engraving that, you know, the other one has. But it's not, you know, quite as nice. It's not as pronounced. Pretty nice gun overall. Fit and finish is is nice. You know, if you look back in here. It's it's not bad where the tang fits. It, it's not perfect. I mean, this part's actually... Let me show you. Is, so the cap on the pistol grip is actually a bit nicer fitted than the fancier one. But yeah, you can see this, this wood's pretty nice. You know, it's got that same exact... That same exact fitment here on the screw and that little you know, decorative piece or whatever. Uh, same with the button to release the forend. Now, just like the Mercury Magnum, there's a couple knots that they kind of left in the wood, and, you know, and that's part of, the, part of the character. And if you guys remember, in the first section, uh, there was a couple spots where this they broke out, a couple of the, you know, raised diamonds... And I fixed that up, and it came out quite nice. You know, the the bluing, it's got a little bit of wear, and I didn't fix any of that up right around the high spots. And it's full and full. I measured them. They are 725 to 728. I did the best I could with a set of dial calibers. I cleaned up the muzzles. You'll notice these have a brass set of beads. And just like the Mercury Magnum, the mid bead is enormous. It's huge. It's uh, basically the almost the same size as the front bead, and it drives me bonkers. Um, I did actually shoot this the other day. And it shot well. A uh, bit more noticeable recoil on this one because of that that hardened hardened pad. But you know, I don't have these 
because they're going to get hunted hard or anything like that. I have them because I like them and I got this thing for just a little bit over a third of the price of what I paid for the first one and I, I just couldn't beat that. Nothing on the pad. You can see that thing cleaned up quite nice. So we'll leave, we'll leave this one right here in frame and then I'll grab the Mercury Magnum to, you know, show a lot of the similarities. Now, you'll notice that, like I kind of pointed out, same for the button. Um, you know, like I said, this gun, I don't believe this one was actually ever, you know, if it was used, it wasn't used a lot. You know, this one's a lot fancier. Uh, this also doesn't have any of that information like the other one has on the receiver. And that, you know, I keep saying the other one, for God's sake, it's a Kaznar Imports. But it's really no different than just branding, you know, half these Turkish shotguns that are coming in nowadays. But there's no information on this other than that butt pad. I can't find anything on it. So if anybody would be interested in a, you know, a, a full-blown video comparing uh, the two, I can do that. But everything is pretty much the same on the Mercury Magnum as it is the Kaznar imports. Now, you notice I got them kind of lined up perfectly. It's a weird camera angle, but let me move it over here. And the only difference is about the thickness of the rubber of this butt pad and length. Everything else is the same. Full and full barrels, 32 inches, mid bead you know the size of the initial bead you know this one is attempting to be on the fancier side you know the only difference is this one has the ivory beads over the brass beads but actually i think the uh, brass is a whole lot better the grade of the walnut on the mercury is certainly a lot nicer you know it's it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. I don't think there's a whole bunch of changes. You know, it's probably like buying a, you know, a work truck versus buying, say, the Denali, right? They're pretty darn similar. It's really hard to see a whole bunch of difference when it comes to looking at these, you know, from a distance. Other than, say, maybe color of the receiver, and then you get closer and you realize, hey, this guy's a box lock full-blown, and then this one is a you know, side lock and, uh, you know, box lock. I, I don't know what you would call that action, but it's, it's, uh, it's like a combination of both. So that's pretty much it, guys. I just kind of wanted to go over this. And, you know, I, I know a, some folks will be like, yeah, what the heck do you need two 10-gauge side-by-sides for? Well, I don't need them, you know. It was one of those things, like, I really wanted a break action 10-gauge that was a double. So that was how this one kind of came about, and and at the time when I when I bought that, you know, about a year and a half ago, ten gauge side by sides were going for a freaking premium on Gunbroker, and they still go for a lot, but not nearly as much as when I bought that. And technically, I got a good price on that. If I sold it today, I could probably only get what I have into it, and then that one there came at uh, you know three hundred fifty bucks cash, and I just could not. I, I just couldn't say no because I don't think I could lose money on it if I decided I wanted to get out of 10-gauge, which I highly doubt that will ever happen. But I just couldn't say no to it, and, and I don't really need it. But, it you know, at that price, I think it's okay to have. Kind of look at a lot of this stuff as an investment. Um, you know, and on top of that, kind of see that Kaznar Imports as... A, a true hunting gun whereas this one's a little bit on the fancier side like I said it's like barely used and it's like a beautiful example of you know something from the 70s and it's 
just have a hard time wanting to take that one out, whereas the Kaznar Imports was clearly hunted. Not the snot kicked out of it, but it was clearly hunted. So I feel a lot more comfortable taking the Kaznar Imports, and then this guy can kind of remain a, a safe queen, or if I'm doing you know, a shoot at a buddy's house and you want to pull something out that makes people say, what the heck is that? Well, you know, either of them would fit that bill, but this one certainly looks better doing it. Um, but yeah, quick video. Figured I'd kind of show everybody what I recently picked up. I got a whole bunch of stuff in the works, guys. You know, 410 TSS, 12 gauge TSS, um, a new 20 gauge, new to me, that I bought used that probably going to shock a bunch of people when I show them the manufacturer. No, it's not Beretta, but uh, probably shock a couple people when I show them. Um, actually, turn out to really like that damn thing. So, a uh, bunch of stuff in the works, guys. Still got to do the 10 gauge pattern for that one turkey, uh, two turkey loads that I made. Uh, so, a bunch of stuff in the works. You guys kind of tell me what you think. You know, something maybe you're interested in seeing next, and I can I can work on that. But this is just something I wanted to show everybody. I just I still have an affinity for for 10 gauge, and I just I'd like to add another one to the collection at a minimum. Uh, I'd really like a 10 gauge in an over and under. I really, really, really want one. I've been looking and looking and looking. I found one recently, and of course somebody cut the damn barrels and it's like god darn it you know and there wasn't enough material in the barrel yet because they cut them down to 27 and there's not enough to thread it now man if i could have thread it i probably would have bought the thing but you know of course somebody had to take it upon themselves to ruin something that didn't need to be fixed so anyways that's the that's the last one in the list yet and potentially original brown and gold and a steel receiver i think i'd buy one of those yet too if i could uh if i ran into one for a reasonable price but yeah hopefully i see you uh, in a week or two and we'll go from there thanks for watching